Historically, the art market has been an exclusive place, which often prevents emerging artists from exhibiting their work in big cities like London, which in turn prevents them from reaching their full potential. I'm here to speak with art experts who are on a mission to promote cultural diversity within art and to find out more about this world. So hi, Virginia. Thanks for joining us. So you are the founder of Lacquer. Could you tell us a little bit about how you got all of this started? I've been in the art world for over a decade mm -hmm. and noticed that there was a gap for a cultural crossover between Asian and African contemporary art. Uh, there were lots of antique events going on, mm -hmm. um, but none of them really incorporated cr cultural diversity to an extent side by side. And after a, a substantial amount of market research um, on a global basis, we set up LACA and really to ensure that people that and artists and galleries who couldn't get a seat at the big power table of these massive art events could have the opportunity to exhibit in London and also to be on an online platform that they could afford. I hope that it will bring the attention to the next generation, um, as well as collectors and interested institutions, mm -hmm. um, to diversify into these new fields. And that includes educating people with the new art formats and mediums. Mm. And that's augmented reality, virtual reality, and our interest is that you hear it banded about a lot and I get lots of young people coming to me saying I want to be in the art market because they hear that uh, paintings cost 50 million, 60 million <laughs> Hong Kong, US or whatever. Sure. And at the end of the day, the art world is a business. Mm -hmm. And I'd like to try, we live in a city, one of the greatest cities in the world. It's incredibly expensive to get on that rung or that ladder and I want to try and make that exclusivity available mm -hmm. to people that are emerging artists or underrepresented. And yeah. that includes all continents, um, but in specifically Asia mm -hmm. um, and Africa as well. Mm -hmm. And we had been thinking about that way before it became the popular um, current style sure. or whatever. Tell us about Demif Gallery. Oh, Demif Gallery, I'll say, is a platform where we, we're trying to promote emerging artists, uh, especially with, uh, I mean, with, who are spe specialized on co contemporary African art. Mm -hmm. uh, basically, um, any, those artists based anywhere in the world, but if they've got this, because you, you've got, when you go on most of big events, you've got, you don't have, sometimes you may not see any, African artists or some artists, some art from, I mean, on that style. And yeah. we just thought, why not trying to work on that? Since we like base where uh, all the, the big events uh, happen. Mm -hmm. And that's what that's what the Myth Gallery started. So how would you say LACA has actually directly helped your emerging artists? Uh, we're working with uh, a lot of uh, artists based in Africa. Mm -hmm. uh, I tend to call them local hero, but when you come in the international market, they're not known. Mm -hmm. Some of them have been working maybe for 30 years. And then suddenly when you're in touch with, if, with LACA on their platform, mm -hmm. you have the opportunity but to, to be seen by collectors and uh, all the specialists and especially have the opportunity to be seen uh, on, on, on Sky Art like uh, Claudie Kahn on the wall. So you are a lecturer and curator of contemporary Southeast Asian art. So what makes the art industry so exclusive? Fear. Uh, a large part of the time people feel um, that they can't go into galleries. And it's that sense of putting up a barrier. Mm. The whole point about an educational element is to take away the perception of barriers and to demystify and take away the sense of elitism. Mm. Art is a communication tool. It's a language. 
It's a visual language. And it should be available to anyone who wants it to be available to them. How do you feel LACA have been able to help uh, emerging artists, specifically in the pandemic? I wanted to expose people, give them the chance. And at a time when they couldn't travel, and that was another reason we set up LACA, people couldn't go to art events, mm. they couldn't travel. And in a way, it forced people onto the digital market. It was coming anyway. Mm. The way the art market in London is evolving was going to happen. It just evolved quicker. Well, honestly, it sounds amazing what you are doing. Um, and I just think it's great that you're giving this opportunity to artists that otherwise wouldn't have had the opportunity. I got pissed off mm. when I tried to take um, stands, which are huge money, they're a massive investment, mm. um, at major art events. And I got pissed off with the politics. So if you can't approach it, then go round it. Yeah. And that's what we did with Lacquer. We thought, fine, we're going to do our own thing. Yeah. And we'll, if there's an artist who is there and he's not represented by a gallery, he, he gets to show. And um, as I said, we, we all, everybody involved sings from the same song sheet, which is really good. Yeah.